the New York City public school system, the largest in the nation, is going all remote starting today because of those rising virus cases. We've seen similar switches across the country, and there's a potential cost to the economy as more students learn remotely. Steve Leisman has more on the latest in his road back barometer, and, and this is a really tricky um, setup. You know the virus is out there. You know that things are getting worse. Um, it's a question of what to shut yeah. down and where in the schools. It's a pretty controversial call. Yeah, I've read some heart-wrenching uh, notes from superintendents to parents over the last couple of days, Becky. But the shuttering of the largest school system in the country is at once a pretty potent sign of what's already been happening across the country with the virus surge and an ominous sign of what may be to come for the broader economy. The national index compiled by the online community event company Burbio showing the percent of the 1,200 school districts they track that are teaching virtually has risen four points in just the past week to 40 percent. Two points of that are New York City alone. There have been equal declines to where it came from is those teaching traditionally in school and the hybrid combination. Yesterday's announcement, though, is just part of the broader trend. Schools in 33 states have enacted full or partial closures in recent weeks, including Colorado, Texas, Ohio, Indiana, and Michigan, where the governor yesterday shut down the state's high schools. Now, here's the national co county map. Shows schools in Florida, Texas, Wyoming, and Montana. The deepest purples there, along with uh, states in the South Mississippi and Alabama, still at 100% or near 100% traditionally, traditional, and it remains to be seen how they react to the outbreak, whether it gets broader from here. Now, school closures could come along with other business closures and government lockdowns. One of the biggest impacts will be to push caregivers out of the workforce. As we've talked a lot about, this hits women especially hard. So we could start seeing renewed pressure on jobless claims. We'll get that today at 8.30. Jim O'Sullivan for TV Securities writes broadly about the economy. Momentum looks downward, and we expect monthly indicators to show at least modest contraction over coming months. Like other economists, though, O'Sullivan forecasts better times when a vaccine is deployed. But it looks like for schools, parents, and the broader economy, these are going to be a very challenging next few months. Becky and Andrew, I feel like I ought to get out of the way. This is emotional and personal for both of you guys. I'm, I'm lucky enough to have kids out of uh, high school at this point. But uh, some of the letters I read and, and, and what I'm hearing from parents is just unbelievable frustration and concern and anxiety about the economy right now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.